the launch of the Aston Martin AMR21, the first Aston Martin Grand Prix car in six decades, was one of the most eagerly anticipated of the year. The British Racing Green ish car didn't disappoint, with its stunning new look showing just how serious this team is about giving the Aston Martin name real success in Formula One. But it wasn't only the car that starred. New signing four times world champion Sebastian Vettel means the team has the third most successful driver in F1 history in terms of race wins on its books. And the commercial progress the team has made under the ownership of Lawrence Stroll was unmistakable, with new title partner Cognizant headlining a plethora of new sponsors. What was once Racing Point is well on its way to becoming one of F1's big players. The big question is, can the team live up to the hype? And now that the regulations mean that copying the direction of Mercedes, as it did last year with the infamous pink Mercedes, is less straightforward, has it gone in the right direction with its in-house development work? To ensure you don't miss any of our pre-season F1 coverage, make sure you subscribe to the race, and so you know the millisecond there's something new to watch, ring the notifications bell. The resemblance between the new AMR21 and the Mercedes carries over into this year, although technical director Andrew Green has described it as 100% Aston Martin. As expected, the car incorporates the 2020 Mercedes rear end, which includes a gearbox upgrade and new rear crash structure. This is to accommodate the innovative Mercedes rear suspension, some of which was introduced last year. It means the lower rear wishbone is effectively flipped, with a track rod forward of it. This was a significant engineering job for Mercedes ahead of 2020, but given Aston Martin has long known it was going to incorporate this feature, Green said it hasn't been too challenging to integrate. The result is a design that offers cleaner airflow to the rear of the car, which is crucial for downforce generation. Connected to this is the change to the monocoque, which required Aston Martin to spend its two permitted development tokens. This appears to have allowed the team to narrow the mounting points for the mandatory side impact structure, which has also been lowered, which means the front of the side pods are more narrow this year. Once again, that follows the direction Mercedes has taken in the past. The bulge that is on the side of the Mercedes W12 is also repeated on the Aston Martin, which has a slightly elongated version. There are also aerodynamic changes. The front wing is a more outboard loaded design than it was in 2020, which is again Mercedes-esque, thanks to a change to the trailing edge of the rear flap. The profile has been changed to give a higher load, with the outboard end dropping away to give the required outwash. Gone from the side of the front of the chassis are the vanes that help to ensure airflow is driven downwards. In this area, while the front suspension is similar, the way the top wishbone is integrated into the chassis surface has been refined to reduce the chances of airflow separation that can compromise components downstream. The barge boards are also more elaborate, with the horizontal slats now integrated into the reshaped vertical vane at the rear of this area. Behind this, the side pod shape has also been modified as part of the packaging improvements, with a more dramatic downward sweep than last year. Gone is the ramp style the team adopted in the middle of 2020. Aston Martin has gone against F1's fashion for extreme secrecy and not only revealed a real 2021 floor, but also a significant amount of detail. While the slots have been removed, as per the regulations, there are three vanes next to the side pods, but it's at the rear, with the vanes ahead of and inside the rear wheel, that you see the most significant changes given the importance of sealing the underfloor in the newly created rear tyre exclusion zone. When a driver with a CV like Sebastian Vettel's, four world championships and 53 victories, joins what is traditionally a midfield team, the question marks don't usually hang over the driver. But after a dismal end to his Ferrari career in 2020, there's no question that signing the 33-year-old is a gamble for Aston Martin. But it's a gamble that could, and should, pay off spectacularly. When things are right, Vettel is stunningly fast and given last year's racing point had the kind of rear-end stability he craves and that Ferrari lacked last year, the combination of machinery and a new team environment should revitalise him. There are already signs of that. After his first visit to its Silverstone factory, Vettel was described as being like a performance engineer in terms of his appetite for understanding of the car. 
Vettel says he's excited to join the team and has spent significant time trying to understand the different philosophy compared to the Ferrari, which includes time spent in the simulator. He also talked up the spirit and mood of the team, which he described as very attentive and very welcoming. Alongside Vettel, Lance Stroll still has work to do to prove he is in the team on merit rather than because he's the boss's son. He's a decent driver, with some stunning performances in wet conditions in particular on his CV, including that famous pole position in Istanbul last year, but he's been inconsistent and only managed 60% of teammate Sergio Perez's points tally last year. There is still potential to be exploited, but in his fifth season he must take a step forward and he has talked of his need to combine his craft as a driver with setup work to improve his consistency. What is now called Aston Martin has had a turbulent time during the V6 Turbo hybrid era under the Force India and Racing Point names. Its peak was back-to-back 4th place finishes in the Constructors' Championship in 2016 and 17. But there have also been tough spells, and when the money dried up in 2018, its future was in doubt. The takeover by the Lawrence Stroll-led consortium in the middle of 2018 led to the Racing Point relaunch. But despite the fresh investment, the damage done by years of underfunding, while the team performed miracles on a small budget, took time to repair. In 2019, Racing Point finished 7th in the Constructors' Championship, albeit only 18 points behind 5th placed Renault, but it jumped to 4th last year. But for a combination of bad luck, unreliability, driver absences, its points penalty and Stroll's up and down season, it could have been 3rd. But Sergio Perez's breakthrough victory in the Sakir Grand Prix at least partly made up for that failure. Having adopted and understood a completely different car concept, switching from high rake in 2019 to the Mercedes-based low rake in 2020, the team also made enormous strides in technical understanding. The stage is set to improve on that in 2021, provided Vettel and Stroll can deliver the goods on track. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the new look Aston Martin and where it will finish this season. And if you enjoyed watching this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe.